Deep Space High, the Galaxy Gala, with the Royal Astronomical Society, Advancing Astronomy. Jump into a wormhole and travel to Deep Space High, the school in space. But hurry, because the class is busy building a very own galaxy to enter into the Galaxy Gala. Quiet now, quiet. Well done, everyone who completed their planets. There were some great examples. Although, Quark, I'm not sure what the Galaxy Gala judges will make of your cheesy custard planet. You mean my cheesy custard super planet, Mies? <laughs> well, it's certainly super smelly. Today, we'll be looking at nebulae. And everyone who has remembered their space scuba kit can come nebula diving. And we haven't much time, so let's get going. Nebulae are enormous clouds of gas, mostly hydrogen and helium, plus dust. They're often very large, spanning many light years. So we're going to take a dive into a dusty old cloud. What's fun about that? Ah, Sam, I keep forgetting. You don't have any nebulae near Earth. You won't know how beautiful they can be. They're also very exciting, being the birthplace of many stars. But how can a star be born in a load of old gas? Sorry, in a load of a uh, beautiful old gas. The dust and gas in these clouds is squashed and spun together by gravity. A bit like candy floss at a fun fair. It gets hotter and hotter, and when it reaches a certain temperature, pow! It ignites and bursts into life as a star. We're approaching a nebula now. Who wants to be the first to dive in and take a look? I'll give it a go. Chalks away, chaps! Wow, it's a lovely red color. An enormous sea of red and pink clouds stretching for millions of miles. And I can see baby stars too. Wow, I say baby, but they're pretty huge with trails of gas swirling around them. So pretty. That's the Orion Nebula, one of a type called an emission nebula. And the red colored light it's giving out comes from the young stars that are growing here. The radiation from the stars supercharges the hydrogen gas until it glows, a bit like a neon sign. There's another nebula just a few light years from here. Who's next for a dive? Quark, got your diving gear on? Yep, this one's mine. It even matches my hair, blue. Hey, it's definitely a cool color in here. A huge puffy fog of bluey looking gas. But where are all the baby stars? It's a bit empty, miss. That's because, Quark, you're in a reflection nebula. Reflection nebulae don't have anything inside them giving out light. They're more like mirrors, reflecting light from other stars. Um, miss, what's that creepy looking black thing? It's coming this way. Don't panic, Quark. That's a Bach globule. It's just another type of cloud. A Bach globule? Aren't they number one at the moment? <laughs> A Bach globule is a bit different from the other types of clouds we've been learning about. Bach globules are very dense. This means that there's a lot of dust and gas close together inside the cloud. In fact, there's so much dust and gas that it blocks out all the light behind it. But that's all, Quark. Even still, I don't think I like it. I'm getting out of here. That's okay. It's nearly time to go. Right, right everyone, everyone, back, back to, to the, the shuttle. shuttle. There's just one more type of nebula to look at, and our route home takes us right past it. Just a little further, here we go. We're in the constellation of Draco, and this is the Cat's Eye Nebula. Wow, it really is like a giant eye. There's a, yes, I can see a tiny blue dot in the middle. And the blue and green gases around the edge look like the middle of an eye. <laughs> and there's cool red wispy bits around the edges. I thought you'd like it. It's a planetary nebula. And these are made when a dying sun-sized star begins to shed its outer layers. 
This doesn't take very long, only about 50,000 years, and this beautiful example is less than a thousand years old. We're lucky to be in time to see it. And talking of time, that's the end of the class for today. But now you should have loads of ideas for some nebulas to add to our galaxy. Deep Space High, the Galaxy Gala, with the Royal Astronomical Society, Advancing Astronomy.